Hey, hey, what is up YouTube? Andrew Rooney here. I'm a full-time drummer and drum teacher here in Auckland, New Zealand. And we are back with a PayPal request. You son of a bitch. Now this one is for my buddy, Luke Baudouin. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Luke Baudouin, Baudouin. Or in New Zealand, Luke Baudouin. Brett. Yep. Jermaine. Anyway, this was a bit of a comedy of errors, really. We started off just a little bit of a backstory on this request. Luke actually wanted Stairway to Heaven was a live version by Led Zeppelin. I was 100% keen, uh, but the video, uh, I tested it because I know live Led Zeppelin is, is iffy. And sure enough, that video would have been blocked. Then we discussed potentially doing album version Led Zeppelin, but because I know that song, making it a deep dive analysis and uh, weren't too sure on that. Then, and then, and then, Luke Baudouin, if that is indeed your real name, uh, requested Out on the Tiles, Led Zeppelin. Now, I've already done that video. That one got blocked, uh, available to the patrons. Join up with my Patreon. It's only $5 a month. You get access to the blocked videos. And then. He threw out a couple of The Who songs. And then. And then we settled on. What did we settle on, Luke, in the end? Cream, White Room. And then. No, and then. I, I, that's, that's all I want. And then. Now, I do believe the only Cream song I know is a song that I've taught a few times as a drum teacher, and that was Sunshine of Your Love. Now, White Room, this does ring a bell. I might know this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it up on my Drumio. And then. And I'm gonna follow along with the transcription and make this somewhat of an analysis to go with uh, reaction. It is, of course, the first Ginger Baker drum track to appear on the channel. Many people have mentioned Ginger Baker, so here we are. If you're a drummer, or just a fan of music, or a would-be drummer, you're probably gonna find uh, this Drumio uh, playthrough, the way that it scrolls along with the transcription, pretty amazing. I'm, I'm blown away with these resources. Literally thousands of songs over at Drumio. So you, as a subscriber of my channel, you do get free access for 30 days to Drumio. So you can take my trial, go and check it out, grab, a couple of hundred thousand <laughs> drum transcriptions while you're over there. They're fully downloadable as PDFs as well. It's an incredible resource. Anyway, with that said, Luke Baudouin, this one is for you, man. Really interesting intro there. We've basically got a march, but instead of being on the snare, it's on the toms in 5-4. Is that whole thing? Of, yeah, it wasn't all in 5-4. That Now we've switched to 4-4. Four, four. So if you are new to the channel, if you're new to drumming, if you're just a casual fan of music and drumming, a lot of people on this channel are, time signatures re refer to basically how many and how many of what type of beats are in a bar. So five, four, basically we're counting to five. One, two, three, four, five, then four, four, one, two, three, four. Four, four being called also, also known as common time. And just because <laughs> you think of it, as, yeah, it is common. And four, four is the classic one, two, three, four. Church, gospel, two and four clap uh, that you know and love from FM radio, and most Spotify pop playlists. So it is quite nice to have a different time signature. I'm gonna lead back into this with three bars of 5-4 into this 4-4. Four, four. In a four, four. white room with black curtains in the station Black roof country No gold payments Tired starlings Silver horses Run down moonbeams In your dark eyes Don't light smile On you leaving My contentment 
incredible how much the drum sound has changed over the years. I mean, this sounds like a jazz drum kit to me. The way uh, the big giveaway really is the well, I guess the tom's been tuned a bit higher, but that bass drum is just it sounds like a jazz bass drum. Let's uh, back it up a little bit. A dark eye. Interesting how Ginger naturally feels things, I think, with a little bit of swing. Um, you'll notice that the 16th note, partial ghost notes. If you can see, you can follow my cursor over to this bar here, pointing at it, over to this bar here. Um, yeah, when if we're getting these little 16th note partials in the beat, they tend to be a little bit swung. And the other giveaway that he's thinking of in swung or triplet feel is the big 16th note triplet fills. Just gonna back it up a little bit. Sounds like he's playing this with mallets, unless he's playing very, very quietly, or you know, possibly muted heads like T tails over the drum heads. The same, but it sounds like mallets. <laughs> There's a lot of repetition here in the fill ideas. It's always that da 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 as the 16th note partial in the fill. Well, it's often that in the fill. So that's his, he's going to that for this. I need to look back over a couple of other Cream songs to see if that is a really characteristic thing for Ginger to go to that rhythm or whether it's just the song. That's the vocab he's chosen to go for in the song. But yeah, I remember, I mean, when I teach songs, so teaching Sunshine of Your Love, you'd learn the song really well. You've got to learn it pretty well to teach it and to be able to play it note for note along with transcriptions and whatnot. And um, there was a lot of unusual stuff in that drum part of that song that you probably wouldn't even think about on a first time listen or or even multiple listens because it's just sort of in the track and it's just there. It's part of the song. But lots of unusual choices like um just a very live organic drum part and not playing it safe that's probably my big uh takeaway with ginger baker is someone who's a little it sounds like someone who's a little bit on the edge and not treating the drum part safely it's taking chances it sounds fiery there you go it sounds a little bit fiery to me. Again. In 
again with that. Yeah, it'll never not be interesting or surprising to me. Um, as most of you know, I'm a late comer, late bloomer with classic rock, classic British rock. Um, and there is so much improv, so much improv in this music. That last section there with uh, the big guitar solo. Look, you learn a lot about a drummer probably a bass player as well during a guitar solo learn a lot about them um, you learn a lot about their vocab how quick thinking they are on their feet how much facility active vocab and facility they have access to that they can just reach for during a solo and obviously I haven't looked into Eric Clapton a heck of a lot but he's he seemed to me like someone that you don't screw up his solo right you don't mess up his solo so he will be demanding a lot of interaction I would assume um, but also at the same time no mistakes so I don't know I'm making a couple of assumptions here but I'm assuming he's got a pretty high bar for our bandmates right and um it was just really interesting to see the rhythmic material and the choices that Ginger Baker was making here during the solo. So he was keeping a groove with plenty of variations. I really like that deceptive hi-hat ostinato, open hi-hat thing that he had going through in a section of that song. Oh, I might have to go back and listen to that part again. But yeah, during the solo there, he made me think a little bit of Bill Ward different kind of vocab but a similar approach and a different sound too but a, a similar um improv style approach now bonham if i start comparing all these drummers bonham a little bit more pocket a little bit more pocket sitting in the pocket and providing that like it's like you're sitting on a cloud it's just so beautiful what bonham provides bill ward a little bit more in there kind of shaking things up a bit here probably even more for me i don't want to get too weird and esoteric on this reaction and i'm coming at this as someone who doesn't know <laughs> very much about cream at all other than having taught one song and um knowing a little bit about ginger baker it sounds like there's a bit of a rub it That's sounds like said. there's a bit of friction a That's bit of said. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, competing, perhaps, within the band. 
Um, it's really interesting. It's it's fiery stuff, and it's from an era where uh, songs were written uh, quite differently, quite differently, and and performed live quite differently as well. Uh, so much jamming. You don't get this much jamming in most bands, especially not. I don't think big, like really popular bands, where it's just ah open solo. And the band is just expected to follow along and have the chops and the musical know-how to come back, probably to come back on a chorus or come back to some kind of ending. Part of this is a digital thing. Part of this is a click thing. Things are on clicks thing, and that's synced to backing tracks. And with all that going on, of course, you cannot just go off on a 15-minute guitar exploration at the front of the stage because we're on tracks and you know it's this and this and this and it's 12 34 and that means that it's time for the fireworks to go off and we hit the e chord this is a whole different loosey goosey tempo can waver a little bit the feeling in the band you know can waver which means that back in the day you get probably wildly different shows especially from different eras from bands so yeah just absolutely fascinating of course i mean i'm honest on this channel and i always try and be as open and as transparent uh with all of my viewers and subscribers um i'm not a hundred percent sure about ginger (laughs) baker's drumming now i'm gonna get murdered by some people for saying that it sounds like a diss. It sounds like I don't think he's good. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying I don't know if his particular approach to drumming is for me. Um, his sound palette, the way he's got the drums tuned, his choices, it's all different for me. Uh, and it's not what I would sort of go to. So even just for that, even though that might sound like I'm dissing him and, and I'm saying that I don't think he's good, it's challenging. It's it's challenging for me what he's doing. He's almost a little bit Alvin Jones-ish. Alvin Jones, jazz drum legend, where it's like when you first listen to it, it's like, it's confusing. You don't quite know. It's like an abstract piece of art. You sort of listen to it and go, hmm. And then, you know, if you listen more and more your palette will probably change you probably get more and more used to it i think we're gonna have to listen to a bit more um, mr baker luke baudouin thank you so much for the request and the support and the multi back and forth that we had for this one so um we finally got there man we finally did the video stoked to do it guys if you enjoyed this video please do consider hitting that subscribe button like button and leaving me a comment for what you thought of this video and what you would like me to check out in the future If you would like to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon, it's just $5 a month. And the bonus there is that you get access to all the blocked videos. If you would like a direct reaction request, I mean, I do my best, I do as many as I can, but if you've got something that you definitely wanna get done on the channel, that is via the PayPal link. It's a donation to the channel and I will ensure that is done with priority. And remember you as a subscriber of my channel get access to a full and free 30 day trial at Drumeo. If you're a Cream fan, you can go along, you can download White Room and you can learn the drum part to it note for note. And of course there's multiple courses with some of the world's leading drummers. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, ciao.